Welcome back to Watching Business and Coffee Show right here on Channel Television. We'll head to the market now. And good to know it's still a green market at intraday today. And it has the details. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Ini. Yeah. And uh, Tuesday's uh, trading session, like you rightly mentioned, um, at intraday, uh, still maintaining that uh, 96,000 level. And um, yesterday we saw that um, or some of the oil stocks, um, as well as um, the Dangote sugar and some... I think Boa, Boa food yes, was a yeah. major driver of the market yesterday. Yeah. I wonder how that's doing intraday, if there's been mm. some profit taking as mm. expected, you know, on, on, on that stock. Mm. Yeah, well, um, we have an equity market analyst today, so he'll be telling us more about uh, Boa right. Foods, as well as uh, the market intraday numbers. But now let's tell our viewers, first of all, how this market is moving. 0.28%, uh, like we mentioned uh, yes, uh, at the moment. And yet to date, it has lowered, but um, still within the comfort zone of about 28.44%. Uh, of course, um, we've moved all the way from the 35 35% uh, to about uh, uh, this, this level I mentioned, 28.4. And uh, the market, yesterday we saw about 28 gainers against 18 losers and 36.67 billion are being added to the market. And of course, the, uh, the market capitalization is still within the 55, uh, point, um, 55 trillion level. Now, for South Africa's uh, market at intraday, the GSE is up 0.35% uh, and still maintaining that level for the other sides of the market, we see mostly positive sentiment for the African markets. We see only the Kenyan stock exchange was in the red for, uh, for the close of Monday's trading session, if we can have that on the board. But uh, uh, apart from that, we see that the market has been able to, to still maintain that uh, positive sentiment. And uh, of course, we will be looking out for how it turns out for the close of Tuesday's trading session. Now. For our discourse, uh, we'll be talking about the uh, insurance sector, where we, uh, we have the news just mentioned uh, a couple of days ago that uh, that uh, industry, uh, first of all, we had the banking industry uh, and uh, regulator, that's the Central Bank of Nigeria, announcing that uh, the, the banks will have to rev up their capital base from the current level and are giving them a timeline of about two years. But this time, it's the insurance sector. And of course, we have many of uh, the, the stocks listed on the NGX. And how will that affect the industry, particularly when we know that um, the, those, the, that's not the first time that uh, they had mentioned that uh, the industry should brace up for a recapitalization, but because that exercise was stalled, but this time it's coming a second time, which is almost at the same time that uh, the banks are also trying to meet uh, their, their minimum capital requirement. But now, to give us more uh, perspective on that, let's bring in Abiodun Adidotun, equity trader with, uh, with um, FPN Quest, for more on that. Thank you for joining us, Abiodun. Hi. Good afternoon, Anita. Mm. Uh, so it's nice having you again on the show. Now, let's talk about the insurance uh, sector, in insurance industry, to be precise. Now, Nigeria's um, insurance industry on the stock market so far it's in the negative 96.34 percent but uh, as at uh, the close of yesterday it was 1.1 percent increase but uh, now we also have that news that um, the, the the industry regulator that's uh, the national the nicom has directed or made plans for uh for insurers to brace up for a recapitalization so how do you see this um uh, this uh, announcement by nicom um, it's a welcome development um, by Nikon to try to recapitalize the insurance company. Um, it's been long overdue. Of course, uh, the, in, the companies in this sector uh, should have been strengthened a long time ago. And of course, uh, I think the regulator realizes this. And the conversation has actually been on for about three to four years. And it's time for them to really act to be able to strengthen the position of this um, company in terms of capital base. You know, these companies are taking different levels of risk. And of course, for you to be able to take serious level of risk and switch as, as much as they do take, they need solid capital. So it's a welcome idea. idea. And well, well, still speaking about uh, the insurance um, industry, which is a poor cousin to its um, uh, uh, is a poor cousin to its uh, relatives as a banking counter. We know that in the United States, the insurance companies are actually bigger than the banks, but on this time for Nigeria, it's actually a reverse. Now, and we also have it that um, 
many of the players are kicking against this recap, uh, planned recap. Why is this so? Um, it's, uh, it's not surprising to find a few people uh, to want to continue to hold on to the structure. You know, people have different uh, reasons for what they do. But on the aggregate level, you know, we would say, the bank should tell you that the financial penetration, financial literacy in Nigeria is still pretty much low relative to its potential. Insurance is far a lot behind. How many people have insurance on their houses? How many people have insurance on their cars? And a whole lot, even health insurance. You know, um, there's still a lot to be tapped from the insurance uh, sector. In terms of uh, institutional play, maybe perhaps they are there, but you still find some of the multinationals see doing business with in maritime, you know, they see do business even in oil and gas because uh, insurance companies are small and are unable to undertake some of these, you know, uh, levels of risk. So for them to be able to come closer to their bigger peers abroad, they need this capital. And it's just the only way to go for now. Okay, so I'm uh, still, still maintaining with the insurance. Uh, well, well, this time, let's go to the bank, uh, the bank recapitalization. We've seen that so far. There's a report that has it that um, about 44% 44, 44 of uh, the market's um, uh, performance was actually driven by the recap. And we've seen two banks um, uh, come to the end of their recap while we have two more still, uh, still trying to raise up some cash. Now... What is your expectation for the fourth quarter, which would soon be coming up at the end, after the end of September? What's your outlook for more bank, uh, bank recapitalization plans uh, or banks approaching the capital markets? Okay. Um, in terms of banking um, recapitalization, Fidelity, um, GTCO, and Access are, are the ones that have concluded um, the offer. Uh, and I believe uh, they are going through different... Uh, Process with the regulators and coalition of data right now. Uh, I know they need to stay out there. I still have quite a number of banks to say come out uh, to come and take their own share, you know, from investors. Um, I think this process will run possibly till the end of the year because it is every likelihood that some banks might still have to do some form of ad hoc, you know, placements or private placements, you know, to high net worth in with individuals or um, institutions to be able to show what exactly is being required. So really, it's looking like it's going on pretty well. Mm. Okay, Abiyan, I think we'll leave it there. I would have asked you about uh, the, the price of uh, Boa Foods, but I think because of time constraint, uh, we'll just leave it um, at the moment and watch out for how that market uh, prints out at the end of Tuesday's recession. session. But thank you so much for okay. your time. You're welcome. So that was Abiyan, Adidotun, Equity Trader with Epian Quest. Okay, for the Middle East markets, we see uh, Dubai, which was uh, the lone gainer for the markets on the United Arab Emirates, 0.34% at intraday at 4,339.67. While its cousin there, uh, the Abu Dhabi, is in the red, 0.20% at 9,337.49. On the other side of the market, we still see red colors still printing out there. Uh, both for the Saudi Arabia and the Qatari stock exchange, so both were in the red. And from the Middle East, we go over to the United States where we see stock futures being mixed. First, starting off with the Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, the Dow 30 is 0.01% in the green, and uh, the S&P 500 as well as the NASDAQ, both in the green. And this is coming a day after uh, tech stocks uh, made, made uh, some losses uh, which uh, impacted the market. But of course, the market is still trying to hang on to some gains in the, in the, in, into the opening, opening bell for Tuesday. And of course, the market is looking out for the second quarter results from market darling or market bellwether or tech bellwether NVIDIA, which is um, expected to release its second quarter result, which, will, uh, uh, which is also expected today. And then, of course, the market is also expecting uh, a, a result from uh, luxury chain store Nordstrom, which is expected to be released at the closing bell later today for the United States. But in terms of data, uh, the, the market is also expecting that um, the, the, the 
the Fed rates, the Fed, which is, is still in the news that the Fed would, would cut the interest rate, which is currently at about 5.25% and 5.50%. They're expecting like about a, a quarter of a percentage cut. So, but that would be um, uh, ex expected. So, any that's it uh, for the markets and keeping our eyes out for that US Fed rate cut. Yeah, thank you so much, Anita. Pleasure.